Hi, this is Richard Chamberlain. Welcome back to the Protecting Your Family's Future podcast. This is episode number 95. Today, we're going to be continuing our discussion on uh, elder law and long-term care. And today, we're talking specifically about Medicaid and how that covers the costs of long-term care. Uh, my law partner, Tim Alley, is joining us again this week. Welcome back, Tim. Thank you. Good to be back, Richard. Of course. Uh, now, last week, uh, we talked about what elder law is. And uh, one of the things you mentioned in it was uh, that in elder law work, you deal with people planning for long-term care. Can you go into more detail on what that is? Sure. Um, so long-term care covers everything from in-home care to assisted living to full nursing home care. Uh, the planning piece deals with making sure that the documents such as powers of attorney and wills and trusts and those types of things are, are up to date and in place. And the asset protection piece talks about um, how do you pay for the care, uh, as well as um, uh, making sure that the care is, is the type of care that's needed, whether it's assisted living or full nursing home care. Okay, so the care we're talking about is assisted living, nursing home care. Can you give us an idea about the cost of that? Sure. A lot of times people start with some in-home care, which uh, tends to be uh, up to a couple of thousand dollars a month for somebody to come in a little bit at, uh, a few hours a week or something like that. And then there's also assisted living, uh, and that typically runs around five to six thousand dollars a month. There's just some need for a little more intense care, but uh, doesn't need uh, full nursing home. And then if someone does need full nursing home care, that usually runs anywhere between about nine and $10,000 a month, sometimes a little less, sometimes a little more, but around this area, it's pretty typically somewhere around nine or $10,000 a month. Okay, so that can get very expensive very fast, obviously. What yeah. are some ways that people are uh, paying for long-term care? What, what are their options? So the uh, initial option is obviously doing self-pay. So just paying out of the resources that an individual has. Uh, if that does, then those resources can go away pretty quickly. The other option is, is long-term care insurance. That usually needs to be purchased uh, somewhere in, before age 60, sometimes uh, uh, definitely before age uh, 75. And then there's also uh, Medicaid, which can pay for the cost of long-term care. So you mentioned Medicaid. Uh, doesn't Medicare cover these costs too? There is a little bit of Medicare that covers long-term care costs, but it's very small. Typically, Medicare will cover 20 days of uh, long-term care costs. After that, the, it's up to the doctor and staff of the medical facility to determine if there's any uh, progress being made on behalf of the individual. If their abilities and, and that are improving and they're getting better, then the Medicare will cover up to, and I emphasize up to 100 days. Other than that, Medicare stops after the 100 days um, or before. Okay, so it's not... 100 days, it might be less than that, depending on whether somebody is improving or, or not. Okay. Correct. So when you're working with clients in long-term care planning, what we're trying to do is protect their assets. We're helping them protect their assets from being spent down for this care. Is that right? Correct. We're primarily looking uh, at people who either never got long-term care insurance or um, who uh, used all of their long-term care insurance. Uh, usually this is individuals who can't afford to, to do self-pay and they're facing uh, the prospect of basically using all of their funds and becoming destitute. Particularly, this is really uh, uh, helpful when there's a spouse at home and we're trying to protect assets for that spouse that's living at home. So, uh, yeah, protecting assets uh, so that their spouse or that they can receive the quality and quantity of care that they need for as long as they need it. Okay. Now, last week, you you mentioned if you're out of money, you're out of options. And that's really what we're talking about here, right? Yeah. 
So is it true that if somebody is already in the nursing home, there's nothing that can be done? Is that the case? No, they can definitely um, protect the assets, even if they're already in the nursing home or about to go there. It just becomes a little more complicated at that point in time. And there's uh, some limitations on what can and can't be done. Okay. So how does Medicaid come into all this? How does somebody qualify for Medicaid? Essentially, Medicaid is going to pay for most of the cost of care after someone becomes eligible for uh, Medicaid benefits. Those benefits are based on, or the, the qualifications are based on both the assets of the individual, the income that the individual receives, as well as their level of care. And the assets of the individual have to be spent down to $2,000 or less. The individual is not allowed to keep more than $50 a month in income. And they have to be what Medicaid calls otherwise eligible. And that basically means that they have to have assistance with a certain number of activities of daily living. Those activities are um, medications, feeding, dressing, toileting, uh, a lot of those types of things, mobility, that type of thing. So they need assistance with multiple uh, multiples of those uh, activities. Okay. So less than $2,000 in, in, in assets, less than $50 a month in income, and not able to care for themselves, essentially. So thanks, Tim. I, I appreciate that information today. Now, next week, we're going to be looking at the more specific information about assets. What's, you know, when we're talking about less than $2,000 in assets, what can someone have? So I hope that you will join us then. Tim, you'll be here with us, obviously. But um, I hope that's helpful for you today. As we continue our discussion over the next several weeks, please join us. Uh, as we learn more about long-term care planning and how uh, we can help clients in that area. So I hope that's helpful for you today and we'll see you again next week. Thanks. Thank you.